This is the Kid Carson Show. Kid, Kid, Kid Carson Show on the Beat 94.5. It is 846. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Big old knowledge bomb coming down right now. This is a knowledge bomb. These things can hurt your brain at first, but they're, they're for your own good. Believe me. Because <laughs> it goes against what your natural instincts tell you. These knowledge bombs. I'll tell you. Trevor Warren in studio. Trevor Warren from Core Quest, the website corequest.ca. Trevor, what's up, man? Morning. Hey, Hi, good to be here. Trevor. Thanks for having me back. So, for those of you who haven't heard Trevor before, Trevor has been on the show a couple times, and you are, would you call yourself a relationship expert? Yep. Yeah, would that be okay? Yeah. You, I mean, you are a relationship expert. I don't yeah, know a lot of experience actual, in that area. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I actually went to um, a weekend of yours um, with my girlfriend. It was like a... Um, uh, Diff- uh, couples that all went for the entire weekend, and you basically went over. The- In fact, you got another one coming up. That's right. In January. Yeah. It's ba- what's the what's it called? The seven essentials. Seven essentials. Well, the the workshop's called Relationship Revolution. Okay. And what we go over is these seven main essentials that we've discovered, like over the last decade, are the things that make relationships not only work but thrive. That's right. Like yeah, yeah, good so work. we get them, we explain it, we get them to do it, and they and they really have those skills at the end of the weekend. Oh, I'll tell forward. you, I think the last time I saw you, I was crying. Yeah. Really? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intense weekend. It's very intense. Yeah, mm. but you learn a lot very quickly. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I, at one point, I cried near the end of the weekend. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you don't go into the weekend saying, I can't wait to cry. I mean, no. that's obviously. But you, you really do you peel back the layers. And that, I'm not saying that to scare anyone, but you really do peel back the layers. And I will say before we get into um, the um, aspects of a conscious conversation, is that uh, I'd say for like at least a month or two after the weekend that I spent with uh, you and your team from CoreQuest, I was... Like high on life, like you really do see the world in a different way, mm-hmm. and you you talk to people differently, and you just connect to people differently, and mm-hmm. it's I think it's something you really have to um, actively do. Absolutely, it's an active. It's a practice. It's a practice. You really do have to practice, and I think I, I mean I haven't practiced it. I, you know, life gets it's so hard to change habits. You know what I mean? So yeah. you get back into the same routine of things, but it's one of those things where I keep on saying whenever my girlfriend and I are having a challenging time or challenging day yeah. i'm always like let's dig out the the work the workshop book yeah. and let's have a conscious conversation because it really does set you up to have to, to feel good afterwards yeah and so i don't know if that's a good setup for what you're going to say but um, oh yeah for sure um it's something called uh, a conscious conversation maybe i'll just hand it over to you and you can tell us what what that is yeah well i think um so the acronym i want to go over today is called pact P-A-C-T, so it's just a quick thing to remember when you want to have a conscious conversation. And I like the acronym PACT because it's like it's a formal agreement. You actually need to commit to a particular process, especially when you're dealing with um, a challenging situation or conflict, you're in intimate relationships. So PACT basically stands for, the first thing is P, so it's presence. You need to be present, right? We got our Blackberries and our iPhones and we got all sorts of distractions going on and you can be certainly physically present but you're not mentally present or emotionally present mm-hmm. so what you want to do is be really present that's the very first thing you want to do mm-hmm. you want to be aware of your environment too you don't want distractions you don't want those things going on so you want to be super present that's a lot harder than it sounds oh yeah mm-hmm. it sounds like oh it's easy you just sit down and look at each other no it's 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 not that easy yeah there's always a kid yelling or uh, yeah like a, tw- a, a text going off yeah so you got to optimize yeah. it right like turn mm-hmm. your phone off you know make sure mum's got your child handled or whatever TV, do you phone, yeah turn radio, it all off music, anything iPod, electronic everything for mm-hmm. sure yes. get rid of it get rid of it at least for that period of time mm-hmm. all of these things yeah these aren't easy things to do these are like pointers and but practice these things if you just do a kind of a good job at some of these things it'll increase your consciousness and yeah. communication really well so that's present that's p a is active listening is another really tricky one. I think a lot of the times in our conversations, we are mostly interested in getting across our agenda. Mm-hmm. We're pushing our story, mm-hmm. right? So we're not doing a very good job uh, of listening to our partner's story. Um, so if you'll, you'll probably notice that when you're trying to get something across and then your partner starts to talk to you, you're already concocting your rebuttal halfway through what they're saying. So you're actually missing a lot of information. And every time you say, yeah, but, you're just basically invalidating their reality. That's what you're doing. So you really want to take into account the fact that there are two different realities going on. They're both very valid for each person. And so you need to make room for that. So you need to hear, not only listen, but actually hear what they're saying. So that's kind of an act of listening. Yeah, so if like Nira and I were having a, a moment, 
when Nira's telling me how she feels, in her world, that is her reality. Yeah. And I'm telling her, well, no, this is how I see it. That's my reality. Yeah. So if Nira says, well, I think this, and I go, yeah, but blah, 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 yeah. instantly, not only am, is she not going to hear what I'm saying, I'm not, even, I'm not even hearing what she's saying, and then she feels like, well, you haven't even... Right. You haven't even really heard what I said. Is that like, my cue to say something or <laughs> well, <laughs> now? <laughs> and that's going to escalate things, right? Because as yeah. soon as Nira doesn't feel like she's being heard, you, d- you said the yeah, but now she's going to increase her, sh- her strategy or she's going to, and that's why things escalate in conflict, right? Because I didn't get heard. So the, you know, if you can just do that piece. Even though you're on the same team, it feels like you're against each other. Yeah, for and sure. And that's so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you need to be on the same team. That's active listening. So that's called active listening. Yeah, yeah. Okay. C is calm. <laughs> be calm. Simply because what we know just about the physiology of the human brain is that when people are upset, <coughs> their prefrontal cortex, their higher thinking brain slows down. So we become stupid oh when God. we're angry. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> and you notice this, right? Like people kind of go into more basic instinctual fight or flight, like they get angry or they sh- slam the door and they walk away, right? Yeah. So. When we're upset, we actually can't learn th- stuff. We can't take as much input. So we, we really are at a disadvantage in terms of our resources that we normally have. So you need to be self-aware. You need to know what your trigger points are. You need to know if you're getting upset. You need to have a strategy to calm down because you will not, the chances of resolving anything in a, in a, in a aroused state, uh, anxious state, is going to decrease significantly. So work to remain calm. And that's just how the human brain works. Right. Yeah, when you're either when you're perceiving some kind of threat, whether it's real or you know, it's actually most of the time it's not a real threat; it's a perceived threat, and and our bodies just know what to do with the threat, right? Mm-hmm. You got to survive. Like it's a very it's a millions of years old this instinct, so you have to be really careful about managing it. So literally, parts of the brain shut down. Yep, the part of the brain they that tells this. you how to yeah. yeah. That the smart part at the front, <laughs> but the front of your brain down. So is that why a lot of arguments just seem so irrational? Yeah, and you end up you know that you're arguing about things like you know you find yourself arguing and you're and you know that even you're not even making sense, Anymore? but you're just arguing. Yeah, because yeah, you're you, not losing this. You're point. not making yeah. sense. Yeah. Wow, yeah. it's the worst when you're fighting and you know you have a pathetic argument, but you're mm-hmm. just standing your ground. Exactly, that's right. Can we come back and oh, sorry, there's one more, one more um, out of the, of the four. Um, after calm, there's one more here. And then can we play a quick song and then maybe have an example of how it works? Sure. Is that cool? Let's get in the fight. Let's yeah, let's, have, let's get into an actual fight. Yeah. And then, okay, I'll let you finish off the last one here. Then we'll play a song. We'll come back and let's hear this in action. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have, you know, we'll, we'll set up a fight. We'll come up with a situation. And, so transparency? Yeah. Okay, that's T? the last one, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, transparency. People are not... Uh, they're not uh, particularly sometimes honest with themselves. They're not honest with their partner. They hold a lot of stuff back, right? So if you're going to move through, Im- you know, important issues in your relationship, you need to be, you need to say your truth, right? Even if it's going to hurt. So, um, and this is something that a lot of people aren't even really aware of until they really just pay attention to it. How much am I holding back? And they do that, I think, because to try to feel safe or you know not to put not to be too vulnerable not to get themselves in a tight spot but you know if you're not going to be vulnerable or transparent with your partner whatever you're holding back that's the part that's not in relationship you know and a lot of people have a big mask they're not saying very much hmm. so transparency i call it radical transparency you know be really transparent about everything that's going on so that's the piece you got to get it on the table because if you want your partner to get in and figure it out with you you they need to know the details yeah right? yeah I tell you, once the once you um, reveal yourself in that way, that the the work really pays off. I mean, when you hit, hit that, even that m- one moment, you get a little taste of that bliss. It really is amazing. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing when it works. And again, if you just followed these four things and you did a pretty decent job on these things, for most people, it would be like a huge improvement. Wow. Yeah. Let's awesome. have a, a really brief example of how it works. Um, right after we do some gym class heroes, if you're into that. Yeah. Let's try it. Okay, all right. We'll do so we'll do a song here. Right back with Conscious Conversation with Trevor Warren. <laughs> 